JFT, just fair and direct. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to JFD's daily market review for March the 15th. I am Harlambos Pissuros, Head of Research here at JFT, and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events, and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds uh, to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar traded higher against uh, all the other major currencies on Friday, Monday, and during the Asian session Tuesday. It gained the most versus AUD and ZD and JPY in that order, while it, de it decked out le the least gains versus the Euro and the British Pound. Now, the simultaneous weakening of the safe haven yen and the commodity linked Aussie and Kiwi combined, um, uh, combined with the relative strength in the Euro and the Pound suggests that sentiment surrounding the war in Ukraine has improved somewhat and this is also supported by the fact that the European shares traded in the green uh, yesterday. That said, Wall Street saw its main indices trading unchanged or negative with a deteriorating appetite rolling and intensifying during um, during the Asian session uh, during the Asian session today. Now, in our view, investors may have turned willing to add to their risk exposures on, uh, after, after Russian President Vladimir Putin signaled a positive shift in talks with Ukraine on Friday. Hopes of a diplomatic solution rolled over into this week as well, but no progress was announced in yesterday's talks. And this may have been a reality check for market participants who abandoned equities during the US session and continue to do so in Asia today. Now, another reason, um, another catalyst uh, behind uh, the slide in Asian markets may have been the increasing COVID-19 cases in China. Now, more talks between Russia and Ukraine are scheduled for today, but our view remains the same with no concrete signs that common ground could be found soon and with the war still raging, we would consider the risks as staying tilted to downside. Having said all that though, besides geopolitics, monetary policy is likely to, to return to the, front, to the front page of investors' agenda this week as well. Uh, tomorrow we have an OF, an, an off, excuse me, tomorrow we have an uh, FOMC uh, decision, while on Thursday it will be the turn of uh, the Bank of England. Both banks are widely anticipated to lift their benchmark, their benchmark rates by 25 basis points, and thus if this is the case, attention will uh, quickly fall on hints and signals on their future plans. Market participants expect both banks to proceed with another uh, five quarter point increases by the end of the year, therefore clues pointing to anything less could prove negative for uh, their respective currencies, uh, meaning the US dollar and the British pound. We would like to see the wording matching that of, uh, mar matching uh, what uh, the, uh, we would like to see the wording matching what the market is currently pricing in, in order for uh, decent decision uh, related uh, spikes north in, again, in the US dollar and the pound. Now, as for today's events, during the Asian session, we already got the minutes from the latest RBA meeting, but the information we got was more or less the same as what we learned uh, from uh, the actual meeting, specifically that uh, the war in Ukraine is a, major is a major new source of uncertainty and that the board will not increase uh, rates until actual inflation is sustainably within the 2 to 3% uh, target range. Now, early in Europe, we already got the UK employment report for January with uh, most numbers exceeding their forecasts. However, the pound did not react, 
perhaps as pound traders uh, keep their gaze locked on Thursday's Bank of England decision. Now, from Germany, we have the ZW survey for March, with both the current conditions and expectations indices forecast to have declined notably. However, with the war in Ukraine and its consequences uh, to the European economy, that will not come as a surprise. In any case, we still see the path of least resistance for the euro as being, tilted, as being uh, to the downside. Now, Eurozone's industrial production is also due to be released and it is forecast to have slowed to 0.2% month over month in January after expanding 1.2% in uh, December. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 8 o'clock AM GMT. You can find the link in the description below. So, goodbye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.